Hi, this is Ryan with Better Tattooing, and today we're going to be covering fine line tattoo theory. All right. Okay, now that's over with, fine line tattoos, something that is heavily debated, uh, possibly even contested inside the tattoo world. Some people say that they're possible, other people don't. And we're always trying to figure out, at Better Tattooing, why, right? Why can some people say that they're gonna be possible and other people don't? So we figured, hey, we'll just make this video. Hopefully it's gonna be short. Um, that gets into why these can work how they can work effectively, you know, and uh, what to expect if you're trying to do them. We're not really telling you how to do the tattoo, but maybe we'll get into it a little bit. Anyways, fine line tattoos. So first off, what's a fine line tattoo? We're gonna be seeing small needle groupings that are used to apply a heavily detailed, in some cases, um, tattoo that is just resulting from small lines, maybe small dots if we're gonna be doing a stippling style thing, right? Um, and, but it's gonna really rely on that like single, three needle, you know, bug pins, things like this, that's, that's making very, very minute amounts of trauma into the skin, depositing small amounts of pigment to make something that a lot of people find cool nowadays, right? Um, detractors from this will claim that if it's not bold, it won't hold, which in essence is partially correct. Um, when a fine line tattoo isn't done effectively uh, or correctly, there can be problems with the longevity um, and uh, let's let's go over that for the first one. Okay, so I'm doing this off the cuff. It's six in the morning, and oh boy, howdy! I've only had one cup of coffee. Anyways, excuse me. Fine line tattoo. Um, okay, let's let's first do the why they won't work as a question because this is probably where most people are going to end up trying to drop off right a lot of people i know will probably want to like learn how to do it but let's let's go over why they won't work at times right um we take our skin model which we love to use here on this video channel um epidermis dermis subcutaneous tissues right it's your first video just get accustomed to seeing those three lines a lot <laughs> we use them quite a bit um the idea with the tattoo is that you're taking a needle, right, to deposit pigment into the dermis, which is held fast by the skin being remodeled and immunological responses. We have a video about that if you want to go back and see it. But um, that's the basic core concept of uh, a tattoo, right? The, the quantity of pigment that is laid into the skin is what we're going to call saturation, right? saturation now the idea with this is that the less quality or not less quality the less quantity of pigment that we actually have stuck into the skin the less likely it's going to be that you can see it right so the idea that bold will hold is depositing a massive amount of pigment right over a larger area that is able to reflect reflect slash refract light that's really early in the morning i'm sorry um and it makes it more visible to the viewer's eyes, especially at a distance, right? Um, when you look at like traditional Americana tattoos, things like this, you know, new traditional tattoos, they focus a lot on like really heavily saturated parts of the body to create an image. Um, with fine line tattoos, we're not doing that, right? What we're trying to do is create the least amount of saturation in the smallest pocket of space as possible. So the idea was before, if you didn't have decent saturation, that it wouldn't hold up over time and you couldn't see it. Um, but this is gonna be dependent on the type of trauma that you're imparting on the skin. So a lot of people claim that this is why down the line, fine line tattoos won't hold and they don't look good. Which, I mean, in theory, you know, when given evidence X over Y, it kind of makes sense, right? But there has to be a reason as to why. So why is that? Why do fine line tattoos sometimes work? So, I'll go back to our skin model here. When we do a tattoo, we're, we're inducing trauma, introducing trauma into the skin um, by, you know, mechanical means of the tattoo machine or even hand poked, you know, Irizumi, whatever, Tabori. And in doing that, when the body's forced to remodel, you end up with pockets of scar tissue that are remodeled, you know, collagen elastin fibers kind of just go in any which way. They gobble up and hold on to pigment. 
And then the body's immune system also kind of helps along with that, right? It's a foreign invader, so it keeps trying to grab onto it and remove it. Uh, macrophages that go up to goblet can't actually remove it because they just get too heavy. They're not able to move back down through the skin. So they end up just staying there in aggregations, right? Now this, the key with these things is how much trauma is being imparted on the skin. So if I have a very large grouping needle, right? Let's say we'll have one versus the other here. Um, let's say this is a 13 round liner, right? And this is a three round liner. We can automatically make an assumption that the amount of trauma that is going to be imparted on the skin for each one of these is going to be different, right? Given good technique, let's say it's the same person is doing it or whatever, right? Um, just because the size of the tool that we're using is going to be different, right? Um, the more trauma that you're imparting, the more the body has to work to hold on to that, you know, <laughs> that that pigment that we've uh, introduced and the more likely it is to have aging effects right because as we age our skin gets thinner right and this is the bold will hold argument as uh, as it gets thinner the amount of trauma that's here basically ends up getting compressed the pigment that's in there has to move as a person ages one way or another right so that compressive effect is going to make the lines a little bit bigger if we're just talking about line work right now um and it's, it's going to be able to sustain that clarity of the image because there's so much ink in this space, right? Saturation level maximum <laughs> that it can, it can be moved and it can spread out and it can still be visible. When we're using a smaller grouping liner, right? Like a three round, because there's less trauma, there's less compressive effects on the skin when this comes in because there's less pigment in there too. You're going to see less of a movement coming out, right? So, as this ages, it's not going to bleed out as far, right? If you have a three round liner that's put on somebody who's 20 years old and you know, by the time they're 60, it's not going to have moved as far away from the center as a 13 round liner, given concentrations being equivalent for the size of the needle that's being used. So <clears throat> if we know that this is, you know, at least in the theory going to be applicable, we can make assumptions about the individual who's getting the tattoo and what is going to happen with that pigment as they age. Why don't I just redo this? It's three lines, right? Come on. So when we're doing a fine line tattoo, the goal is to only induce enough trauma that can support the maximum concentration of pigment given, and this should be for any friggin' liner that you're using or any other type of needle, to, to create enough trauma to support the maximum amount of pigment absorption that you could get without wasting anything and not having additional trauma that's gonna influence that aging as it moves forward, right? So when we take a, a three round and we're doing fine line tattoos, the angle that we're actually working at, I'll just make this a little bit bigger point, um, inside of, the actual tattooing, this is off the top edge of the skin, right? If it's extremely shallow, if it's deep, all those things are gonna increase or decrease the amount of trauma. So your hand positioning has to be extremely precise given any body part that you're working on to ensure that you're only injecting pigment at a very specific angle, point, depth in the skin. So you're decreasing the amount of trauma but actually able to keep that concentration level high, right? If we're doing a fine line tattoo and we have a very steep angle, right, where things are coming in, we're gonna be creating a lot of additional trauma coming in here just to have that needle go far enough to be able to implant something so that it looks like visible. Having an extremely steep angle when you're doing a fine line tattoo doesn't work, right? Because you're just creating a big blowout pocket under the skin. As this ages and it compresses, it's gonna naturally wanna move in the path of least resistance. If we take the same idea and we go too steep, uh, we go shallow steep, anyways, if we're gonna be going something that's almost like perpendicular to the skin, right, where it's just coming down, what's gonna happen is, as this is moving forward, backward, doing all this stuff, uh, we can get over concentrations of pigment, right? So you're moving at exactly the, and I mean, this is like machine grade, you know, computer level, <laughs> like, like tech that you would need to do to be able to move something perfectly given absolutely perfect skin conditions, which is an impossibility. Anyways, if you're going straight up on a 90 and you're moving across the skin and you get even saturation, this is going to be the best possible result, right? Because we're not having a lot of additional trauma being introduced by the needle going different ways. Therefore, if the pigment has gone in here, it should spread extremely evenly, even if it is extremely fine, right? Um, we're thinking about stuff 
on a microscopic level. This isn't like taking a paintbrush, you know, and scrubbing something. No, no, no. We're thinking very, very, very small. And so if you have enough aggregation of pigment into a small area with very little trauma, it should stay clean. And this is also going with the idea of like clean line work. The bad thing is, is having it at a 90, you're not going to be able to really control exactly what's happening into the skin, right? Because it can never be perfect. That's just life. You're going to have variances in the actual flowability of the pigment coming down the needle. You're going to have different thicknesses of the skin based on like location. There's so many things that could go into it that you can't control that running something straight up and down is more often than not going to result in a line that's going to be, you know, in the future, oversaturated in spots, broken in some, and just kind of junky, right? Given enough time, of course, this may slowly repair itself um, but aesthetically this is not what people are going for when they're going for a fine line tattoo right so how do we combat this the idea is to only have such an angle right that is that is not shallow enough not steep enough to where we're only creating a minimal amount of trauma going one way or the other off of the design and inlaying pigment as efficiently as possible in theory, you should do a few sittings in a fine line tattoo to make sure that you get the saturation correctly. You always want to try to go a little bit shallower, not try to go deeper, and you're not trying to oversaturate the space, right? That's really the key with a fine line tattoo. You're not trying to make it thick and bold and heavy and put enough pigment that it can see. You're trying to slowly build up values to ensure that one, we're only creating enough trauma to actually hold the amount of pigment that's necessary for it to be seen. And two, <coughs> sorry, this man so early. And two, we're trying not to like, that oversaturation thing is the absolute killer for any fine line tattoos. It's so delicate when you're doing them, right? If you have too much trauma and you have too much pigment into it, it's gonna, it's Oreo cookie effect, right? You take an Oreo, you squish it, you know, when you're a kid, dunk it in milk, the cream comes out the sides. This is what happens with our skin when we age and it gets narrow, right? When it thins. So, I mean, you could just take that and run with it, right? That, that idea that a fine line tattoo isn't gonna last is possible, but it's gotta be based on some like real theory here, right? Because <laughs> everyone's different. We can't make assumptions that there is a single way to do a fine line tattoo that's gonna work. Um, just universally, right? It's gonna have to be adapted to each person on each part of their body that we see, and it's really gonna have to focus on that concentration and that scarring. Um, so we wanna think about that. The other thing we need to think about is actually how the skin lays on the individual. Um, and we'll get more into this in another time. Uh, Ah, um, or, okay. <clears throat> Surgical incision lines uh, or skin tension lines. Um, if you're a tattooer, you don't know what these are. That's cool, a lot of people don't. Um, these are areas in your body, like let's say that you're gonna go and get surgery done, surgical incision lines. Um, or you get a trauma where something gets you know stuck through your skin, a nail, bolt, whatever, right? Some type of major trauma. It, those are the lines in which the skin is naturally just gonna start to tear apart, right? Um, you can identify them by kind of giving the body a little bit of a pinch in different areas and seeing how the follicles actually line up. They'll give you a gradient, a curve that you're gonna be able to see. And when we're using these things, which you can use these things to help determine how best to apply a fine line tattoo, what you're doing is you're looking how those skeletal muscles throughout the skin are actually like migrating and moving around the body or the person. And you utilize them by tattooing with them as they go, right? If you're chasing a needle and you're moving along these incision lines, you can basically deposit your pigment and influence, this is like another influence when the skin ages, right? Um, uneven pockets of saturation to move in a specific way because the skin is laid out very specifically, right? The <clears throat> inside the skin, if we're kind of looking, oh no, I use green, oops, that's not gonna be good. Um, there's always gonna be, there's these small skeletal muscles that are around your hair follicles, right? Our hair follicles are gonna come down, hair comes out, and there's these little muscles on them, right? That can contract. <clears throat> this what gives us goosebumps. Kind of neat, right? Well, because of how these are spaced and in between each other, right? That allow the contractions to go, you know, one way or the other. 
let's do this. Boink. If we're laying our pigment between those, wherever they're laid at, we can actually like influence how that pigment is gonna creep when people age, right? If we're creating trauma here that isn't gonna be relying on pockets where follicles all are, where there's like sebaceous glands, things like that down at the bottom. If we're trying to put the pigment just between these, we can ensure that they're probably not when things, you know, compress and they get older, gonna leach into neighboring areas and cause a greater amount of occlusion, right? So you can identify the skin tension lines, give a little pinch, and make sure that you're running all of your lines very specifically to try and set that needle between them, right? Um, we'll have to do a video on how to identify properly surgical incision lines and what they mean for stretching, but th these are kind of like the two things that you need to, to worry about, right? <clears throat> I guess three things now. Uh, <laughs> If your machine's running at a speed that's gonna be like effective, right? Try to put the fucking needle only so deep and make sure that you're running in between those surgical incision lines. You'll, you'll end up having a cleaner tattoo that'll last longer. Um, oh, this green is horrible. I think that probably should be it for right now. Let me go check my notes. All right, there are a couple other things. We might have to check our notes a few times. Um, other things we need to think about when we're doing a fine line tattoo, right? There's gonna be skin thickness. Uh, skin thickness and location. Um, oh, there we go, Ryan. I'm gonna spill today. Um, skin thickness based on parts of the body that are being used more environmentally or interacting with their environment are gonna end up having a thicker epidermis. Right, soles of your feet, super duper thick, right? It can be like four mils in thickness. It's very, very, very thick. Uh, top layer of your skin, some the palms of your hand. So, <clears throat> or you get other spots like your eyelids, top of the collarbones where the skin is really, really, really thin, right? So if we have two things that are going to be of varying sizes, attempting to do something that is extremely fine line is gonna be you know, almost impossible in essence, right? If we're having to cross, traverse a large area of skin to implant the actual pigment into the dermis, this is almost like a scrubbing effect, right? There's gonna need to be, because the skin's gonna be pulling the pigment off as it goes in, there's gonna need to be a greater amount of trauma imparted on the skin by going deeper Right, to create a greater amount of vacuum given the amount of like hydrophobic substances that you're putting on top of the skin to pull enough pigment down into the area that you're working on, which is automatically going to increase the amount of trauma that's there, right? You wouldn't try to do a fine line tattoo on a hand because it's just not going to work. There's no way that you can create the right amount of trauma with the right amount of concentration of pigment for it to look anything good in the future. It's just probably like a 99% chance that it's going to fail. <clears throat> At the same time, if we're working on a really thin area of the body, we're gonna have to be extremely delicate because if we choose to go too deep, the same thing is going to result, right? If you're not really comfortable working with fine areas, very thin skin on the body, trying to do a fine line tattoo on it is just not going to be effective, right? You're not gonna have uh, that level of um, clarity inside the image because you're gonna be more than likely uh, inducing way too much trauma and you're gonna be uh, <laughs> probably getting a blowout on that. That's why those blowouts happen, right? We go too deep if we have our skin, right? There's a level at the bottom of the dermis, part of the skin called the extracellular matrix. When we end up tattooing down here, it causes inflammation, right where the skin will end up kind of bubbling up, filling with a bit of fluid to try and clear out any of the debris or the things that have gone in there that have a the potential of causing infection. And in doing that, because that extracellular matrix is really loose, it ends up staying relatively inflamed and carrying the, the pigment outwards, right? Away from the actual site of the injury. And when the skin gets really thin, the ability of you to be able to get down as a tattooer and put that pigment right into the ECM increases, right? Because you don't have so much of a buffer, so much of a cushion when you're uh, tattooing that skin versus like, let's say skin on a forearm or even the palm of a hand, right? So make sure that you're paying attention to that skin thickness and location when you're doing this. You wanna make sure that you're picking a space that you feel comfortable with, one you have a lot of experience in, and tactically it's gonna feel a bit different, right? You have to give it the wiggle to do a bit of a test. If I'm testing the back of my hand or my forearm, right, or even my eyelid, collarbone, those skins are gonna move 
you know, by touch a little bit differently, right? The less connective tissue you have on an area, the more it's going to move. The less connective tissue that you have in general, the thinner that the skin should be, right? There's barely any connective tissue up along the collarbone. Same with like on the back by the elbow. It's hypermobile area, right? It needs to bend and move. So, and when we give it a wiggle and there's like a lot of wiggle in the area, the chances of a fine line tattoo being done effectively can drop if you don't take into account the fact that the skin is actually going to be thinner in those locations, right? If it doesn't move very much, like a forearm doesn't really move too much, right? You can feel tension and stuff on the back that's in the top of the thigh. It doesn't have that loose feeling like the back of a hand. There's a better chance that you'll be able to do that fine line tattoo effectively as long as it's not super duper thick. Think about that thickness in relation to the amount of trauma that you're gonna be imparting on the skin and you can get a better result. Oh man, I need a cup of coffee. Anyways, I think that's probably a good one. We're probably over 20 minutes now. So um, I'll leave this with you. Let me know if you like it, comments, you know, some whatever stuff. Um, and we can go probably a bit more into this, but intro theory, right? Like we're trying to think about how this is going to work as opposed to just how to apply it, right? There has to be a way that we can identify and adapt a fine line tattoo to different parts of the body. So when you're doing them, think about that. And if you need to practice, good luck. Um, don't practice on paying clients. <laughs> That's ethically kind of not right. Anyways, um, that'll be it for today. This is Ryan from Better Tattoo and signing off. Thank you.